Well guys, I'm heading down to a job in a very exclusive community here in Wilmington called Landfall. We're going to change out an outdoor expansion valve, which is a heat pump specific part. It meters refrigerant heating mode, just like a TXV would meter in cooling mode at the evaporator. This one is mounted at the evaporator, except that in AC mode it would be called the condenser. So we're going to change it out. We have a defrost board to change out. And uh, we'll get some footage of that, some of the process. This one's on a train. I think XR12, I think that's what it's called. And I have videos where I do preventive maintenance on these. It's about a couple years ago. So, come check it out. See if we can't uh, keep this train going. Here's our train unit for today. We'll be taking this panel off. TXV should be right up in here. Replace it. Replace the defrost board and we'll be happy campers. Here's our TXV. Metering, refrigerant, and heat mode into the outdoor unit, which will be the evaporator. We have our bulb connection here, right down here. Now for equalizing line here, coming up to the side of the TXV. So we're gonna go ahead and pump this unit down. Maybe we can start the removal process. Well guys, I think this Schrader might have to come out too. Oh yeah. We're about to sweat out this TXV. Keep in mind we want to move our little wires out of the way for the defrost thermostat there. For the defrost sensor, should I say. We're going to sweat the equalizing port out. Sweat out the TXV here and here. There's a lot of play in it, so it actually should work out pretty good. We should be able to pull out the top and then uh, pull the TXV out too. So we're going to do that, and then I will get back to you. Our TXV is sweated out. Our equalizing port is sweated out as well, being very careful you don't want to break it off. And here we are. All done. We have our TXV all fitted up. Kind of bend our copper out of the way there. We'll flow our nitrogen. Braze it up here. Braze it up on the base. Go ahead and finish that. And come down here and fit up the equalizing port into the suction line. And then we can test it with nitrogen. Be happy campers, we have our nitrogen set up over here at the flow meter. It's a pretty easy spot to work. So, pretty nice. We have a little enclosed area we can just walk right into. Very nice. So I'm gonna get to work brazing this up and then I will catch you guys on the other side. I am now putting nitrogen on the system to test it out. I have the TX, TXV still wrapped up. I have the rag still wrapped up on the pipe just in case I have a leak. I don't have to put everything back. I can still wet the rags with my little cup there, pour some more water on them. But I am checking that now. I don't hear any whizzes or whistles yet, so I should be good. But you never know. We wait to get a little bit of pressure on it first. I always spray bubbles on there, each joint, to make sure it's finished. Hard to do with one hand. I'll get the rest of them, make sure everything's right, and move on. We are now in a vacuum. We just started about a minute ago. The vacuum gauge is calibrating. Auto calibration. And we have not gotten below, well, I guess we have 4,600 microns is coming down pretty nicely. We'll let it run while I'm cleaning up some of my stuff on my little cart over there. And we'll move on to charging and replacing the old defrost control. Alright, guys, we're about to put our refrigerant in. Five pound, eight ounces, weighing in liquid to the liquid line. A little bit faster. So we're going to try to get all five pounds in there and then we'll charge the rest of it for the line set. Since the line set's about 40 or 50 foot long, we can add in what train suggests. The service facts aren't here and I can remember pretty much what they suggest, but I figure I'd just charge it up step by step, get a little bit closer. So let me go ahead and start doing this. We'll try to get our charge in there.
All right, guys, we are back at the job site, ready to start the unit up again. Have it set to cooling right now. I'm running it for a little while. It's kind of a nice warmer day. We're about 75 or 80 degrees. We're going to run it for a little bit, add some charge to it, see if we can't make it run. We have been running for a few minutes, guys. We're going to let it run for about 10 minutes before we get started. The homeowner had to leave the house. Unfortunately, they had a medical event with one of their friends. So what we're going to do is we're going to charge it up in AC. Switch it over to heat so we can check out how it runs the heat as well. Uh, the unresolved part will be that we're going to have to complete the process at spring check here in a few weeks. And the reason for that is, of course, the homeowner is not going to be home. I haven't had a chance to check the airflow. Uh, that's something I do every spring anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it pretty close and we're going to fine tune it at the preventive maintenance of spring. But we're going to let it run for a few minutes and then we'll start charging. I have a couple meters set up to monitor some of the amperages and voltage. I have 6.6 .6 amps on the compressor, which is well below the rated load. Not a lot of load here today. We have 246 volts. We have 0.83 amps on the fan motor. It's rated at 0.9, I believe, so we're all right. I just keep these in place while we're charging. My field piece is my regular meter I go to most of the time. I have an amp probe, ACD4 that I've had for about about three or four years. I bought it three or four years ago because I had to do some work on an electric furnace and for some reason my meter had just broke or something like that so I went to Lowe's and got this one. So that's why I still have it to this day. It's a nice meter. It's just compact. It doesn't do capacitance or anything like that. Just kind of a simple electrical meter. But I like it. Continue to let it run. And we'll start charging by sub cool here in a second. All right, guys, we're dealing with an evaporator that had very little as far as load on it. So I switched in the heating. So we go a little bit by the heating charge. We put it in the upper 200s here on a day like today. The charts actually don't go as high as the temperature is today. So we're going to be in kind of a no man's land as far as charging. We're going to let it roll for a few minutes. We should be in the 275 to 300 range as far as head pressure. And that way we can get a pretty good idea as far as our charge being right on. In the cooling cycle, our evaporator had very little load upstairs. I mean, it was 68 when I went up there, and we ran it for several minutes, so I'm sure it's down to the mid-60s now. So we're going to use heating instead. As you can see, guys, with the heating cycle, you get a much higher amperage because the head pressure, temperature, are much higher. Because we have a 70-degree day out here. The compressor's pushing uh, in the neighborhood of 265 PSI right now. You can expect a much higher I have disconnected my high side hose and the liquid line port down there. I opened up my manifold so that all the contents will flow into the suction line. I'm going to restart the unit cooling and allow all the liquid to be drawn out of the hose. So hopefully all that will be left is a low pressure vapor when I disconnect them.